I'm Ryan. And I'm Shane. And welcome to Top 5 Beatdown, a show where we compare top fives for topics that seem completely asinine, yet somehow garner strong opinions. And to add some credibility to the mix, we compare our top fives to that of an expert in the field. Today's topic is American cities. And today's expert is the editor at large of The Points Guy, a site that helps over 10 million people travel better and smarter. Please welcome to the void, Zach Honig. I'm gonna be so excited to be here. All right, well, thanks for having me, guys. I've, uh, I've done a little research on you, not to be creepy, but it does, it does <laughs> say on the site that you've been to 64 countries? I'd say, yeah, probably. I think that's a little out of date at this point, but somewhere in the range of like 60 to 75, we'll say. Dang. So you've probably been to as many countries as I have cities, so this is gonna go great. Uh, <laughs> what about you, Shane? What, what relationship do you have to travel? Um, I haven't traveled Cool. Before. All right, so <laughs> let's get into the list now. Let's, let's list. Let's list. list. Just realized Zach did not know the catchphrase. He didn't know the catchphrase. I didn't phrase. know it, but let's list. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so my number five pick is Denver, Colorado. And I just, yeah. I can't oh, yeah, ever good. remember a time I didn't want to go to Denver. Just like a place I'm always excited to visit. JetBlue had this really cool program. I think it was 2010 the last time they did it, but it was called the All You Can Jet Pass. It's like $4.99 for an entire month of unlimited travel. And so that was the first time that I'd been to Denver and I loved it. When you first went to Denver, what were its uh, first impressions on you? Yeah, I think it was the, I went to the Great American Beer Festival. Have you guys been there? No, oh, it sounds not. good. That sounds Oh tasty. my God. You've gotta go it's i think it was like a thousand different breweries i don't remember all that much of it a little foggy. Denver left a good impression like denver has kind of a small town feel to it um, yeah. but it, it's it's also a big city and especially now i'm like really focused on out in the outdoors and mm. there's just so much to do so like great hiking in the summer uh whitewater rafting in colorado Ooh. Um, and then like the best skiing so i would say that if you want kind of a well-rounded city like outdoorsy trip denver's a, a really good spot for that also denver uh so many prairie dogs did you see those out there i i haven't but what maybe i know denver a little better than you do because i've okay. seen uh, right. quite a few because you've seen prairie there. dogs yes <laughs> well it's one of the city's big features the sole reason i'm not including it is that i haven't been there enough and it gave me a nosebleed because of all the altitude. <laughs> now this is one that you've probably been to, probably heard of. My number five is the Big Apple, New York City, baby. Oh, interesting, coming in with okay. the big gun early. You're breaking my heart. Number five? <laughs> the city that the never sleeps. <laughs> oh. You're sleeping on um, it right now. There's lots of stuff there. Not enough stuff for number one. <laughs> yeah, let me let me know, Shane, if you're gonna treat us to more delicious descriptors like stuff. I like this city because it has if, a lot of stuff in it. I'm gonna go ahead and mute Ryan for, this, for the rest of this. <laughs> <laughs> I'll use it outright. Bye-bye, Ryan. All right, Shane, tell me what you love about my city. I don't want to make it seem like putting it at number five on my list is a disservice. I love it a great deal. I like how thriving and, and busy it is. And I just sort of had like the classic experience where we got invited to some after hours bar that was like a dingy old doorway in an alley and they were like come on in here and we opened it up and there was a velveteen curtain and i was like this city is crazy but it's a little much uh you know it's a, it's a lot to deal with i don't know that i i could spend more than a week there without feeling exhausted maybe that's just me being jealous that i can't afford to live there okay ryan you're unmuted i unmute thee i guess i can't say anything on that so we're just going to go into my number five here. Now, look, this may be a hot take. I acknowledge that, but I do believe this is a top five must-see destination. Number five for me is Orlando, Florida. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to state my case here. Can I mute uh, myself just because I'm so outraged? Yeah, holy moly. You, you, you can't mute yourself, but if you keep up that sass, I might have to mute both of you at the same time. <laughs> I respect the list. I, I do respect this, and I'm excited to hear what you have to say. If you are a theme park aficionado like myself, I, I fancy myself as the world's biggest theme park fan in existence. You could fight me on that. Uh, I won't post my address or any way to contact me, but if you can contact me, <laughs> Go ahead. I believe 
It is the theme park capital of the world. And I stand by that. I, I challenge you to find a city that has more theme park acreage than Orlando. We have Walt Disney World, which to me, the greatest feat in theme park engineering that ever existed. He's pretty much created a self-contained world that is nothing but theme park. Most theme parks, you don't enter the immersion zone until you enter the gates of the theme park. For Walt Disney World, you enter the immersion zone when you park in the parking lot at the hotel. What other place can you say that about? It's insane. You're eating Mickey waffles. You got Mickey Disney dollars. You, you could ride a boat from one theme park to the other and you're still within the confines of Walt Disney World. Crazy. Then you also have the Universal Orlando Resort, which has two great theme parks there, Islands of Adventure and Universal Orlando. There's just so much to choose from when it comes to this theme park smorgasbord. Ryan, I have to say though, everything that you've just listed off about why you love Orlando is could be anywhere in the world. Is there anything about Orlando that you like? What are cities but containers for things that are inside them? <laughs> yes, here's the thing, what Orlando has is uh, one thing that nowhere else in the world will ever have again, and I wanna say it, it's the main ingredient. It's a little guy named Walt Disney. It's almost as if I'm ranking Walt Disney World number five here. And if I could, I would, but it's not officially recognized as a city. It should be. So uh, I'm going to end my turn there. I stand by that pick. All right, my number four pick is San Diego. Oh, I love it. Okay, yes, this right. is great, yeah. I almost moved to San Diego, spend the morning at the beach and go to brunch and have like a real city feel and Balboa Park and the zoo and just, and still being close enough to LA. Hell of a zoo. Hell of a zoo. Hell, a hell oh, of a zoo. Yeah, yeah, have you done the say. cheetah run? Amazing food, like anything that you can get. Mm. I've had like some of the best Vietnamese food, like including Vietnam. The Mexican food is outrageous. So um, good. Even in Old Town, which is kind of touristy, but they, there's some good Mexican food there. I love Old Town. I go to Cafe Coyote all the time. Oh yeah, that's a good spot. A solid, solid number four in the US. San Diego did not make my list, but it almost did. San Diego to me is like what people thought LA was when LA is described to them. And then they get to LA and it's very congested. And then you get to San Diego and you're like, this is what I thought. Ocean breeze while in the city enjoying a nice beer. That sounds great. San Diego is like a lot of people wearing sweatpants in the sunshine. Perfectly chill. It's so nice there that it feels like a simulation. Um, mm -hmm. It's concerning. Let's go to Shane's for a number four. My number four is that old foggy town that we call San Francisco. Ding, ding, baby. Well, I'm gonna stop you right there, Shane, because also my number four is San Francisco. I'm nice. gonna give that my uh, Zamo of the episode. That's a Zamo, <laughs> baby. Okay, that's not a thing. Here's what I'll say about it. It don't look like any other city I've ever been to, which is not something I can say for, you know, Cleveland. Sorry, about Cleveland. to say, what did, Cle what did Sorry, Cleveland, Cleveland do to you? <laughs> it's great. There, it smells like the sea all the time. Um, it does. You can hear fog horns. Uh, it's yes. very hilly, which is weird. Yeah, I've always had a good time there. Amazing meals in that Chinatown too. I'd say like oh, easily yeah. one of oh, the best yeah, Chinatowns. I mean, and their seafood is fucking amazing. Great nightlife there. And also, like Shane says, it really does feel like you're connected to the sea everywhere you go there. And there's always amazing views there because of the hills. Oh yeah, you really you really bulk up those calves. It's a great walking city. A good bread too. Uh, oh good. yeah, oh the sourdough. Before the sourdough, sourdough was, a, was a thing during the pandemic. It was, it's always been in San Francisco. We're over it now, but I've been a sourdough head for a long time. Solid number four. Let's go to number threes now. Breaking into the top three. All right, so my number three pick is Philadelphia. Ooh, that's good too. So, that's yeah. cheesy. That's cheesy. Cheesy. Cheesy in a good way. Uh, in a good way. Cheesy. Okay. All right. Cool. I'll take it. It's my hometown. Oh. Obviously, I'm from New Jersey, but just 15 minutes from Philly, and it is just like the coolest East Coast city, I would say, besides New York. It feels like an honest city too. Like the people there are not going to be fake around you. <laughs> they feel very genuine. Oh, yeah. The no. only city I know that boos its own sports teams. <laughs> <laughs> I feel the soil in that city. Have you guys been to Philly before? Yes. yes, we have. We've been there to investigate Eastern State Penitentiary. Oh, uh, yes. Good pick. I don't know if you guys have been to Chickies and Pete's when you were in Philly, but it's, it's this kind of like micro chain in the, in the Philly area, and they actually have one at the airport. So if you ever pass through PHL, I would go to Chickies and Pete's, get the crab fries. They're ooh, insane. Ooh, ooh. It's like dusted with Old Bay, and then they have this cheddar sauce to, to dip into. It's like 
next level. Constitution Center, hell of a highly bell. recommend. East Bell. Yeah, hell of a bell. The entire section of South Philadelphia is like Little Italy, but gigantic. Ooh, and so there's amazing like mom and pop restaurants, also BYOB, but like the best Italian food I've, I've had in the States. This episode might actually be, dare I say, educational for people who want to travel. I, yeah, I this is so. delightful. All right, well, let's move on to uh, Shane's number three. Oh boy, now this is a city in the US. My number three is New Orleans, Louisiana. Mm. Oh yeah, that's good stuff. Solid pick. When I visited New Orleans for the first time and for a while afterwards, I probably would have put this at number one because it's very easy to become intoxicated when you visit a city for the first time. That is true. And when that I visited, true. I completely forgot about the rest of America when I was there because Me too. it just kind of feels like it's in its own cultural bubble in a way that is really fascinating. I was, I've only been there once for the unsolved shoot. You know, visiting a place once, it's kind of hard to make it crack the list, but we were there for seven days. It's like, uh, it casts a spell on you when you're there. Uh, yeah, it kicks ass. You don't want to go to New Orleans in August, I'll say that. No, definitely Ooh, not. No, no oh, definitely no. not. Absolutely not. Never. Let's move on to my number three. My number three is... The Big Apple, New York City, coming in at New number three. New York City. It cracked the top three. Right. We, we've talked about it already. The, the diversity of all the boroughs and what they have to offer and how they each have their own little unique vibe. Pretty good. They really truly do feel like distinct different places. Amazing food, amazing yeah. nightlife. They go all night mm. long out there. Highly walkable, public transportation off the charts, parks, amazing. One of the best nights of karaokeing, if that's a verb. Oh, I just yeah. made it up. Ryan, what's your, what's your take on New Yorkers interacting with the local? You know, when I when I see someone holding a map out or looking on their phone and it's clear they're lost, like I'll go up and offer to help them. Well, you are in the minority, sir. You think so? <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. I will say that New Yorkers do live up to that New York style and attitude, which I actually don't mind that. I like when people are just upfront and direct. It's a little fast. It's a little frenetic. That's why I'm, I do have it at three, just because I don't think I could ever live in New York. I, I think I'm a little too chilled out, if you know what I mean. Oh, yeah. you are. Yeah. It's just, it's intense. It's it's intense like all the time. And so, yeah, it, I mean, it depends on where you live, but if you're in Manhattan, I mean, you're just, you're surrounded by people constantly. And Ryan, you'd agree that it, there's a lot, there's a, it's got a lot of stuff. It, it, yeah, sure, it got, yeah, I, the, I, I the forgot park? what you were referencing, yeah. Let's go to number two. For Zach. Number two, we're, we're getting rounding there. the bend here. Number two, uh, my, so my number two pick is Austin, Texas. Whew. And I haven't heard Austin from you guys yet, which makes me think it's either number two or number one, or maybe number six, but for me, maybe not. And this, is, <laughs> ooh, and this, is, a, this is unfortunate. Well, here's the thing. I've never been to Austin, always wanted to go. Shane and I actually had a trip to Austin planned the yes. week after the pandemic struck. Oh, right uh -huh. smack dab in the middle of South by Southwest. And then we did yeah. Well, We stayed home You have instead. to go, and you, you have to go, and you have to go outside of South by. Go to South by, but then go another time, and, and then judge. Austin. Live music too in Austin I hear is amazing. Oh my so. God. Yeah. Third Street is just like, it's wall to wall, just live music every night of the week. Is there like a lot of that like You've got some of that. Like a well, I was picturing more like uh, like a Jackson Maine, like a maybe it's time to let the old way down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there's, there's something for everyone there, I would say. Oh, that uh, sounds good. If, it, if it's a mix of those three things that we sang, then I'm excited to hear. <laughs> the food in Austin is next level. So obviously the barbecue. Austin is famous for its really, really long waits for like the best barbecue. But a tip, there's this restaurant called Lambert's um, and they're actually on open table. So you can reserve, as long as you do it like, weeks or months in advance, you can actually reserve a table before you go and then you Ooh. get really good barbecue and you don't have to wait in line. The walkability score is is up there. Like you can you can stay in any of the, the downtown hotels in Austin and just like see everything on foot, which is the way the way to do it, I'd say. Austin, Texas, number two. Yeah, I'm sorry we can't weigh in on it more. Like I said, uh, you know, I've been to a lot, but that is one of my blind spots. Uh, what you can weigh in on, Shane, is your number two. My number two is... Portland, Oregon. I've always wanted to go. This almost snuck on as well. Like I said previously, every now and then you visit a city and when you're there, you're like, wow, this really got a lot going on. There's a lot of crows and the crows are gonna get, oh my chefs, yes. 
You're like uh -oh. a regular uh, Steve Irwin over there. Every city you talk about a little critter that they're famous for. When uh, Denver, you were talking about prairie dogs. It's a very wet city, obviously, and I like that. I like how wet yeah. it is. Uh, it's sort of, it, when I was there, it smelled like mulch everywhere I went, uh, but the good mulch, not like, not like a, a bad mulch. That doesn't um, sound You, you went during good. mulching season, perhaps. It was perhaps. It the spring. When I, the first time I flew into Portland, there was a guy on the plane next to me, uh, who was a native, he was like, is this your first time in Portland? And I said, yes, sir, it is. And he said, I invite you, when you step outside, to take a lungful of that fresh Portland air. <laughs> he invited me. I feel moved. I feel moved. Yeah, it was it was it was a great way to be to be welcomed into the city. Mm. Every single place that we ducked into on a whim ended up being absolutely delicious. There was one morning where it was real rainy. We ducked into this tavern and we were like, "Do you guys have food?" And they were like, "Yeah, go out back." And out back, it was like this like it looked like Hagrid's cabin. That's cool. There were like fires everywhere, and they served us like potatoes and bacon and eggs and like a big aluminum tin. It was wild. Wow. It's a beautiful city. I love it. It feels like a, a fairy tale when you're there. A very weird city. You would fit in there. Oh, yeah. A weirdo like me? Number two for me. We've already talked about it. It may be my favorite city in the world, but I don't know. But number two for me, for now, is the Big Easy New Orleans. I love this place. So Shane and I went to this place one time for uh, Unsolved, and I knew I had to go back. Uh, the French Quarter is amazing. You could you could walk into the French Quarter, uh, spend a whole weekend being enamored by the culture that's presented by it, all the historic buildings and like the history of voodoo, which is very prevalent in the streets mm, there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But there are plenty of things to offer outside the French Quarter, namely the Garden District, which is beautiful, kind of Victorian mansions. You could also see one of the mansions that inspired Walt Disney. Disney to make the Haunted Mansion. And this is not even talking about the main attraction, which is the jazz live music there. Um, mm -hmm. My grandpa had a jazz band, so I have a lot of memories of watching my grandpa play live. So New Orleans kind of really spoke to me. Uh, and for my birthday, I flew my parents out there and we saw uh, a jazz performance at Preservation Hall, which is one of the top 10 experiences of my life. Moved my father to tears because he thought of my grandfather as we watched these people at the top of their craft. Best Cajun food I've ever had, also beignets for days. It's the only place I've been to in America where I felt like I'm not in America anymore. It, it's very self-contained, especially in the French Quarter. I remember when we got there for Unsolved, you looked around and you said, guys, where are we? <laughs> <laughs> I'm in love with that city. I love it so much. You, you may notice a, a big city is is missing from my my top five list, but uh, oh. I've given I've given some clues. But the official reveal, my number one pick, is New York City. Wow, that, that big is apple, big that's big shocker it. for you guys. That's a, that's a big um, shocker. I'm sure. You know what? It's weird. I can almost guess our number ones. At this point. Oh, I can too. I mean, we've covered we've covered New York, but I would say like, as as a New York local, I've been here t I think twelve years now. Yeah, 12, 13 Ooh. years, long time. And I've thought like there have been moments where I'm just like, you know what, it's too much. I'm I'm moving to the suburbs. I'm moving to San Diego. Obviously, that was that was high on my list. I would live in any of the cities on my top five, no question. But New York is just it's it's home. It's you know I feel I, I don't know warm and comfortable here. It's just it's got this. Uh, <laughs> Oh, there's the chef's kiss. There's the chef's kiss. I had to throw it out there. I, mean, I saved it for number one. Even in the rain, even in the middle of the yeah. pandemic, I just like walk out to the farmer's market. You know, walking through the different neighborhoods, it feels comfortable. It's just, it's the only place where I really like have that feeling of, of I guess, belonging. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna start tearing up here. <laughs> oh. But no, I, I love New York and I'm just like, each year I, I discover, I make a new discovery. I don't know if you guys have heard of Governor's Island, but it used to be a Coast Guard base. You have a view of the sky, like an amazing view. You're surrounded by nature. There are birds that you'll never see in the city. I mean, in Manhattan, I pretty much only see pigeons, but when you guys come back next time, Definitely check it out. You know, I, I, I do love New York, much like the t-shirts say, and I'm sure you own one of those. Yeah. Um, one thing I do is if I ever miss the city and I want to be transported to there, you know what I toss on? You've got mail. The Are motion you? picture? Swing and a miss. <laughs> well, Zach, it's, it's very funny. I guess I guess uh, maybe I'm more of a New Yorker than you because uh, yeah, yeah, you like you sort of... like you've got mail more. You're right. Oh, okay. Shane, I'm muting you. Yeah, I'm muting you. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. I, I think it's a worthy number one. It makes sense to me. Let's move to number. Let's move to Shane's number one. We can unmute Shane now. He's out of prison. My number one is 
Hog Butcher for the world, Stormy Husky, Brawling City of Big Shoulders, Chicago, Illinois. There it is. It's a beautiful town. It's got a nice lake. Uh, uh, <laughs> great food, good meat. Um, you know, it's, it's cold, it's hot, it's temperate. I would argue better museums than any other city in the world. Morton Arboretum. Now you think any of those are better than the Met? Yes. Okay. That's dumb. Um, <laughs> the Art Institute. I think the Art Institute. Uh, if, you, if you go pound for pound what they're housing at the Art Institute versus the Met, um, you might be surprised. I don't have much else to say about it. I love it. It's great. That is the good mark of a number one. Don't have a lot to say about it, but it's number one. You know, it's just sort of a. It's it's ineffable. You know. I it's feel it. I like. I've I've had amazing trips to Chicago. It's like hand, definitely in the top ten. I would say like yeah. maybe number eight. Let's say it's number eight. Uh, windy. Windy. Yes. The windy, windy um, city. Not, not for its wind, actually, but uh, politicians. Fun, fun fact. You know, no surprise for me on this one. Let's move on to my number one here. Also, not going to be much of a surprise here, but my number one is Los Angeles, the city of angels. Oh, Look, folks. I didn't see this being your number one. <laughs> Why not? Why did you not see this? I don't this know. I know one? you live here, but I was like, well, this probably isn't going to crack his top five. This place, oh, no, you know? It is. It, is. <laughs> it does. Yeah. I find it hard to think of another place where I'd rather live in terms of the diversity of the life that it offers. You could go to the beach, you could go to the mountains, you could be snowboarding or surfing. Obviously, this is the home of cinema, where we worship cinema like it is uh, a religion. and like, I, a and I, and like a religion. A short drive away to the best theme park in the world, maybe, Disneyland, California. Also, uh, Knott's Berry Farm right down the way, Universal Studios Hollywood. Uh, a whole bunch of fun stuff out here in LA when it comes to that kind of thing. Very fun tourist attractions, I would say, that also do live up to the fun of them. Most tourist attractions uh, kind of suck, but the ones in LA, I feel like, do live up to the billing. Uh, and food-wise, up there with New York, San Francisco, a diverse offering of all kinds of cultures. We have Venice, Santa Monica, downtown, Echo Park. I think it might be the best city to drive through, as long as you're not on the freeway during rush hour. But uh, oh. the only movie I feel like that's ever really captured that is Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I just love it so much. And, and I think really what it comes down to, other than the fact that it is my home and it always has been my home, anytime I travel somewhere, I love it. I'm enamored by it. some place like New Orleans. There's that brief thought that like maybe I could live here, but I never really can pull the trigger because I always just miss LA. I always miss LA when I leave LA and I'm always happy to come back to LA despite having to funnel through the worst airport in the world. Mm -hmm. No question. <laughs> it, it, is, it is home for me and uh, I can't imagine living anywhere else. It's just, it's just got everything. LA has everything. Not everything. It doesn't have what, everything, what, but it's got what, a lot what, of stuff. What, what does it not have? Uh, weather, but I know you don't, uh, that's you don't like weather. I don't have <laughs> to say about it. <laughs> she was talking about weather, and it was, uh, it was just annoying. Uh, I, I like LA because it uh, is a place that chooses to only live in the best weather. When you want some cold, you could drive to the mountains, you could experience the cold. I, I appreciate that. It's just always a pleasurable experience to step outside, unless, of course, there's fires. I mean, I've been to LA so many times, I've got a bunch of family that lives there. I feel like so much less stressed out being in San Diego than I do in LA. Yeah. Um, yeah. Again, another like top 10 city for me. We can unmute Shane. We can unmute Shane. Or, or yeah, or the air is poison. But uh, How long does winter last in Chicago? Nine months? Um, <laughs> usually about five or six. <laughs> Yeah, I love taking a shower and then having my hair break off my head like it's a, a you know rock candy. I guess that does it for all of our list. Does anybody have any final final words they want to get in here before we get out of here? I, I gotta say, I've loved the list, Zach. Uh, I want to thank you for joining us. This may be the most informational, educational, educational yeah. episode mm. we've done thus far, and I've enjoyed like even places where I haven't been, like Austin. Well, heck, I feel like I've gone there. And I have to go to Portland. I've never been to Portland, Oregon. I've, like, yeah, you yeah, gotta I see do. the crows. Yeah. With, yeah. Yeah, gotta see the crows. Very solid list all around, I would say. That does it for this episode of Top 5 Beat Town. Chime off in the comments if you think we nailed it or if we missed the mark on our list. Looking forward to reading those. And uh, before we get out of here, Zach, is there anything you would like to plug? Yeah, you'll find a ton of information about all of these cities on the points guy. So including how to get there on miles and how to stay on your hotel points. So definitely check out thepointsguy.com. And as always, that's, that's the, list. the list. We, we nailed it again. We nailed it again. Every time. <laughs> 